obviously I'm not drinking green beer because that would be wrong. Even though I certainly drank my share of green beer back in the day before I became this. Hey everybody, Sister Terry Bernie with you here today. And as you can see, I've got the luck of the Irish. I'm wearing some green. So our topic today is St. Patrick's Day. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with St. Patrick. He's probably one of the three trilogy of saints that even people who live in the secular world are very familiar with. The first one being St. Valentine's and then of course St. Patrick's and then we have St. Nicholas, which comes around Christmas time. Um, so who was St. Patrick? St. Patrick was actually a person that lived in the fifth century actually was born in 387 and then died in 461 and um, during that time when he was about 16 years old was with a very wealthy family Roma, Roman Britain area uh, was kidnapped by pirates druid and pagan pirates when he was 16 years old and then brought over to Ireland um, in that time he prayed he found God um, and actually was led out of his captivity uh, went to the coast, talked a captain into bringing him back to Britain with his family. And um, during that time, really had that connection with God, decided that he wanted to be a priest, um, and then came back to Ireland to try to convert the pagans and the Druids to Catholicism. Um, and the reason why the shamrock is so significant to um, St. Patrick is that he would use the shamrock to explain the trilogy, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And because a lot of the Druid uh, spirits and deities were generally in threes, he understood that that would probably be a really good way to try to explain Catholicism to the groups of people that he was talking to. So he basically did that for about 60 years and um, died on March 17th, which is why we call that the Feast of St. Patrick. Um, and originally, like around the 7th century, I believe it was started to be observed as a feast day in the Catholic Church. And then, you know, as time went on, it was still a feast day, but obviously now it's less about being a very solemn day and recognizing the day that St. Patrick passed and more about green beer and shamrocks and let's drink and have Irish soda bread and baked potatoes. So, um, and that's a custom that actually the Irish Catholics brought over to this country, as is the wearing of the green. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, in the Irish flag, you've got the green stripe, you've got the white stripe, and then you've got the orange stripe. And the green stripe is for the Irish Catholics, the orange stripe is for the Protestants, and then the white stripe is ideally for the peace between the two, which of course we know there's been hundreds of years of fighting and animosity between those two groups, but the prayer is that there is peace there and certainly it's much better now than it has been um, so and i can tell you that i have always worn green on saint patrick's day just being irish catholic even when i wasn't practicing um, and i was always told that if you wore orange on saint patrick's day that your irish ancestors would come up and haunt you you know a lot of people again because orange is part of the irish flag and sometimes protestants will wear orange as a way to protest saint patrick's day and the catholics that wear green it's all good it's just colors people it's no big deal you know but just going forth and you know thinking about all the things that saint patrick did for us and what he represented and you know the sort of things that he wanted to bring to the world that's really what should be celebrated fun fact um there has been the legend that saint patrick actually drove all the stakes out of ireland um, actually, that didn't happen. There have never really been stakes in Ireland. Um, the terrain will not support them. So while it's a fun story, probably not a miracle that can be attributed to St. Patrick's. So anyway, go ahead, have all kinds of fun on St. Patrick's Day. Please drink responsibly. Um, have a green beer for me if that's what you want, because I really can't drink that stuff. It doesn't look good for me to drink it, quite honestly. It's just kind of gross. Although, certainly, I had enough St. Patrick's Days where I was doing a lot of that um, with my ex-boyfriend, Chuck, but I'm really not going to get into that right now. But anyway, um, I hope that you have found this helpful. It's given you a little bit of history about St. Patrick's Day that you can go out and enjoy. And remember, on St. Patrick's Day, everyone's Irish. So have a great week. Come back, see us for the next um, webisode, and God bless, and have an outstanding week. It's Sister Mary Cat, 
and the wearing of the green. Oh, there's Sister Mary Cat. You have got green eyes that everybody loves. You've got green eyes that everybody loves. Yes, you do. And you have got the luck of the Irish, because you know what? You showed up at our door. Do you remember that? About five years ago. And it was raining, and it was lightning, and it was thundering, and I looked over and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a cat. It's a little cat. And Sister Agatha didn't want to bring you in, but I'm like, that would not be very Christian or St. Francis-like. That's another saint people really like, a St. Francis, because he's the patron saint of animals. And I think he's the patron saint of you. He's the patron saint of you. And you look smashing and green, I have to say. Absolutely fabulous. Okay, all right. The luck of the Irish is wearing off. You're getting tired of me, and I understand. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.